Joining me now with more is infectious disease specialist, Dr. Isaac Bogosh. Dr. Bogosh, uh, we'll hang out with you until the uh, public health <laughs> presser begins, but let's start with this new news regarding Pfizer. Can you tell us, first of all, your thoughts and, and how it's different from the Merck pill? Yeah, so this is uh, pretty incredible news. Obviously, it's a press release, so you know we, we, uh, we're optimistic, but I don't think we should, uh, you know, we, we have to be careful here. We have to actually see the data, and we actually have to see how this works in, in real-world settings. But, you know, if, if what they say holds up, this would be incredible. Here's a tablet that you can take within a few days of symptom onset. You take this tablet for a few days, and it significantly reduces one's risk of having a severe outcome, meaning people who are at risk for severe infection can start this pill early, and it would reduce their risk of hospitalization and death by close to 90 percent. I mean, if that holds true, if that rolls out in uh, in real world settings and, th and those numbers hold up, I mean, it would be incredible. Uh, we know COVID's not going anywhere. Uh, we know that we need significant improvements in our therapeutics. This would be a pill if we have access to this pill. And if the pill works, terrific. It would be a, a huge boost. How is it different from the Merck pill? Well, two, two ways. I mean, they essentially both pills stop the virus from replicating. They take slightly different pathways to get there. But ultimately, both pills will eventually, will, will hope to stop the virus from replicating when, uh, when someone's infected. Um, and, you know, you, as, as people know, vir <laughs> these viruses are, are complicated and there's several different pathways in the virus replication cycle that you can target. So they've targeted, they've taken slightly different approaches. But essentially, if you take either of these medications, the, the hope is that the virus just stops replicating within you because you've attacked the virus at various points in its uh, replication cycle and, and that you just don't have those uh, significant out, uh, negative outcomes. But for both of these drugs, the key is you've got to start them early because once mm -hmm. that replication has started, it, it's you've already you've already you know traveled along the disease path, and now you're not only dealing with the virus but also the individual's in, inflammatory response to the virus, which can be very dangerous and damaging as well. And so, beyond all of that, it, is the thought that this would be something perhaps more acceptable to those who are vaccine hesitant, or does it work in conjunction with the vaccine? Yeah, I mean, I would hope not. I, I, I hope that this is, we, we treat this as a therapeutic and that, you know, for starters, there's, prevention is the best, right? Prevention should be number one. You've got to avoid getting COVID-19 in the first place. And uh, I think we should, this is not a, should we do this versus this? The, the, the answer is we should vaccinate. That is always the right answer. Prevention is key. This is really for people who have COVID-19 infections who are at risk of severe infection. Maybe that's a breakthrough infection. Maybe that's someone who's remained unvaccinated. But yeah, I wouldn't say that this is a reason to not get vaccinated. Okay. First of all, this is uh, ages away. And, uh, and secondly, uh, you know, we, we, we really have safe, effective, widely available vaccine tools that we can use. Dr. Bogosh, always good to see you. Thanks for your time this morning. Have a great day.